Hey guys, I hope you guys are having a great day today. It's been a while since I've sat down and filmed. Um, I pre-filmed a little bit because I was going on a work trip and honestly I just didn't have enough time to film and edit while I was gone. So I'm sorry I missed Monday's upload. I should be back in the swing of things for the foreseeable future. So. With that being said, I hope you guys are having a great day today. Today we are going to go through every single one of my blushes. I have swatched all of them for you and just kind of talk through the formulas. I was originally going to do a ranking or a tier list of all my blushes, but I just couldn't do it. I love all of the blushes I have in my collection. I do frequent to clutters, as you guys know, so the blushes that I have in my collection are really curated to my likes right now, so I just didn't think it'd be fair to choose a favorite. Also, I'm pretty sure if I did rank all of my blushes, you guys would be able to guess which one was my favorite. Also, my blush preferences change all the time, so it just didn't make sense for me. I thought this would be a better way to kind of just go through my collection, show you guys what I have, and talk through products and formulas, and kind of just give you a little glimpse into my blush collection that you haven't seen already. If you're new here, hi, my name is Vivian. I'm a robotics engineer with a love for all things beauty and makeup related, and I love it if you liked and subscribed if you aren't already. Let's just hop into it. I am a tiny bit sick. I'm getting over, I don't know if it was like just a little mini cold or whatever. I haven't been feeling great the past couple days, but we're getting over it. So it, I figured it was time to sit down and film a video. I am going to put my hair up because it's honestly really hot out, but I wanted to show you guys this little claw clip I got. It's in the shape of a cowboy boot. It does not hold up a lot of my hair. Don't get me wrong. This is not a claw clip for thick hair galleys so it doesn't work super well but it's so cute that i can't get over it so i've been using it a lot it's also just nice to clip onto my backpack for when i'm in like a really big pinch and i need to put my hair up um if i look puffy it's because i cried today and that is just the fact of the matter so please ignore everything let's just focus on the blushes i'm gonna start off with all of my cream blushes and then kind of move on to my liquid and powder blushes. So the first blush I'm going to talk about is my Danessa Myricks Blush Balm. This blush is very pretty. It's this really, really deep kind of like purple mauve color. So I thought it'd be a little bit more red and undertone when I picked this up, or actually this was sent to me through Skeepers, but I thought it would be a little bit more berry toned and it ended up being a lot more purple. So this is a super super pigmented blush the formula is very emollient it feels very melty and oi oily but it lasts a really long time and like i said it is so pigmented so this is not for people who are like kind of scared don't like a lot of blush but it's so pretty i think this comes in six different colors and out of all of the colors i didn't find one that i was super drawn towards i think that's partly because danessa myricks as a brand is just kind of geared towards people with deeper skin tones and so for me this blush is really pretty i kind of have to be in a mood to breach for this blush though just because it is so bright and so purple i feel like it doesn't really go well with my skin tone with most of the looks that i create so while this is a really pretty formula and it lasts a really long time i just don't think this shade is like the perfect shade for me i don't have any other shades like it though so while i don't use it often i am going to keep it I didn't even say what shade this was. This is in the shade Dancing Queen. The next formula I want to talk about are the Rose Ink Lip and Cheek Colors. I have two shades here. I have Ophelia and Foxglove. If you followed me for a while, this Ophelia blush was in my project pan. I did end up hitting pan on it. Rose Ink is a clean beauty brand and I've noticed separation with the product which is kind of a sign that it's going bad. I haven't reached for this blush since I took it out of my project pan and since I hit pan on it so it's been kind of sitting in my collection for a while and when I opened this up you can see that the oil has started to separate again. Nothing like major, nothing that is overly concerning but that is something to note. I probably had this for over a year honestly so it makes sense. This is a really really good blush formula though. It 
is a little bit thicker and moussier than other cream blushes. I feel like a lot of cream blushes, especially in pots, are really emollient. And while this is emollient, it just has like a thicker texture, which I find makes it last really, really well on the cheeks. So like I said, Ophelia is this really pretty like just everyday pink shade and then I also have the shade Foxglove which does not have nearly as much use as Ophelia obviously but this one also hasn't separated as much as Ophelia. This blush is also stunning. This tone specifically I really like in the summer as like a sunburnt look. I think it is very pretty. I think the color of this is very similar to the next blush I want to talk about which is the Milani Cheek Kiss blush. This is in the shade Nude Kiss. I think the formulas are very very different but I think swatched they look really similar to me. The Milani one is way more emollient, even more emollient than the the Danessa Myricks blush balm. It's a really good drugstore option so this formula works really well. Since it is really emollient though I don't think it lasts as long on the cheeks but the shade is very pretty. Again, kind of that sunburnt blush vibes. Honestly, I feel like this shade of the Milani blush is like the perfect in-between of these two shades from Rose Ink. I feel like they're very similar in tones, undertones. This is a good, this is a very good drugstore blush option. The next blush I want to talk about is the e.l.f. Putty blush. This one specifically is in the shade... Maldives. It's this really deep kind of terracotta -y red shade. I think this is stunning. The color is almost an exact dupe for my Phytosurgeon's Skin Spark in the shade Sublimate. They are very similar. The textures are extremely different. The putty blush is much drier of a formula, but on the cheeks they look extremely similar. I would say the Phytosurgeon's Sublimate is a tiny bit more cool toned than the e.l.f. Putty Blush, but they're both stunning. I don't reach for the Putty Blush that often. It kind of just gets lost in my collection. I do have the Putty Bronzer in my project pan right now, and I've actually really been liking it for the everyday because it is pretty subtle and sheer, but it's buildable. I do think this is a really good formula. I believe these are around six ish dollars and I mean you can find them everywhere so if you want kind of a drier formula that's still pretty sheer I do like these elf putty blushes I only have this one shade though I used to have a different shade but I decluttered that because it wasn't really my my tones that I really like to wear if you're looking for an affordable option that's not as emollient as the Milani cheek kiss blush I really like the elf putty blushes Speaking of the Phytosurgeon's Skin Sparks, love this. I love this blush so much. It blends out so easily. It kind of melts on the skin. I love the tone of this. I think this is such a pretty color on my skin tone. Phytosurgeon's is not the easiest to get your hands on. I believe you can only buy it on their website, but it's just such a good blush. It's very similar to the rose ink blushes in my opinion, but a little bit more emollient, but it lasts really well on my skin and this shade is just absolutely stunning. The next blush I want to talk about is the Rare Beauty blush. These are the melting blushes. This one specifically is in the shade Nearly Neutral. I think these blushes are for those who are just getting into cream blush that tend to go overboard with blush and just want something that is really subtle but still beautiful. I think this blush is exactly that. It's not dewy, it's not matte, I think it's like the perfect in-between, but you can tell that it's much sheerer than other cream blushes. I think you can tell on the swatches too. It just has the perfect amount of sheerness where you can build it up for literally ever and you'll never go overboard with your blush. And if you guys know, I am a heavy blush galley. I always go overboard with my blush and like that's just the type of look that I enjoy and that just never happens with this blush. It just builds and builds without ever looking like clown-ish, like clown face-like. I really like this blush. The packaging is also just really cute. I really like the Millennial Pink. I'm in my pink era. I don't know what happened. I was never a pink girl growing up but something about just pink and being girly just makes me really happy. So 
I just love the packaging, the component, the closure is magnetic so it's fun to play with and the blush itself is very beautiful as well. Like the name describes, it is melting so it just feels very emollient at the second that you touch it and rub it but it blends out on the skin so easily. If you want to use your finger, you can use your finger to blend it out. I typically use a brush but I typically use most cream products with the brush anyway so this is definitely a good one I really like this one the next blush in my collection is this one from Lila B this is the divine duo lip and cheek in the shade B fearless this is no longer available Lila B closed down as a brand the blush formula is very stiff this shade B fearless is definitely a brighter shade it is like almost a true red this is definitely the brightest red blush I have in my collection the packaging is very weighty it's very heavy I don't want to dwell on this too much because you can't get your hands on it anymore but the blush formula is nice it's not one that I reach for very often just because the packaging is really small it's really hard to get your brush in there and because of that it's just not something that I tend to reach for these pans are also like tiny like if you actually look at the component the blush is so small and you know, like with the highlighter, I feel like I've almost hit pan on the highlighter even though I only used it a handful of times. So it's a good blush. Would I recommend it for the price that it originally retailed for? Probably not. But it doesn't matter anyway because Lila B doesn't exist as a brand anymore. Moving on to my cream blushes in stick formula. The first one I want to talk about is this one from Westman Atelier. I have the shade Pop It. It is this very pretty cool tone pink. If you guys know me, you guys know I love my cool tone pinks. The packaging is very luxurious. It's very weighty. It has a magnetic closure. The blush formula itself is easy enough to blend out. I wouldn't say it's like the absolute easiest, but I think you're really just paying for the brand name and the packaging. I will say that the product inside is not completely conjoined with like the mechanism that pushes it up. So when I first opened this, it did fall out of the packaging. It's fine though. I store my blush, my cream blushes like up. So I haven't noticed any issues with it. I just have to be careful when traveling with it. I think this shade is stunning. I think the best part, the best thing about this blush is the shade though. You know, it's very expensive. Westman Atelier is a very expensive brand. So I just, I can't see myself repurchasing, repurchasing this if I ever run out of it. And even though it is stunning, I just don't think it's worth the price. I have other cool tone pink blushes that I like just as much, if not more. I will say that compared to my other cool tone pink blushes this one has a little bit more oomph to it it's just much more of like a deeper raspberry cool tone pink rather than like a neon cool tone pink like persona bubble is i do really like this i think it is a beautiful blush i think it's luxurious and it makes me feel luxurious putting it on but for the price and the broken packaging i don't know i would not buy this full price but if you are a sucker for pretty packaging, luxurious packaging, and pretty formulas, I do like this. Speaking of Persona Bubble, I have the Dream Stick blush in the shade Bubble, which is the cream stick version of their powder blush in Bubble. This isn't my favorite cream blush formula. I really like the Cool Tone Pink. You guys know how obsessed I am with Bubble. But this is a little bit harder to work with. I find that it can pick up my foundation underneath if I'm drawing it directly on my face. You know, it's really emollient so I don't think it lasts very well on the skin either. I think there are other cream blush formulas out there. So if you're really, really interested in the shade Bubble, I would go for the powder version instead of the cream. I love Bubble as a color. I don't love the blush the cream blush itself the next blush i want to talk about is the victoria beckham beauty cheeky posh blush in the shade fever so this is a very bright red orange blush in the promo pics i thought it was a little bit more red so i just don't reach for this that often i'm not a big orange blush fan in general i don't really like the oranges pinky peach types of vibes but i do think that this would be really pretty in the summer like imagine an all-white outfit and then just this pop of orange on your face i think that'd be really pretty as like a concept 
I just don't think this blush tone works very well for me. I did like the formula from what I remember. I haven't reached for this in a really long time, so don't quote me on that. But I did like the formula. It is not super emollient, so I do think it kind of dries down in a really nice way as a quick swatch. I just don't reach for it that often because it is so bright and it is such like a very specific color that it's not something I reach for on the everyday. The next blush I want to talk about is the M Cosmetics So Soft Stick Blush in the shade Bitten. This is a really, really deep, deep berry shade. The thing about the M Cosmetics blushes are that they are so pigmented. Like one swipe and that is way more than you need to cover your entire face. So you have to be really careful when you're using this. Honestly, I would recommend like drawing it onto your hand and then picking it up with a brush from your hand. I like the color of this for the winter specifically because it kind of gives you that I'm cold winter look, winter vibes. It is beautiful. I do like the formula of this a lot because it's so pigmented. I find that it lasts really well on my skin, but you know, just be wary that if you are going to be using this, you really don't need a lot of product. I think the formula is like the perfect amount of emollientness. Like it's not very stiff. It blends out really easily, but it's not too emollient where you feel like it's going to slip off your face. On the other hand, the next blush I want to talk about is the Merit Flush Balm in the shade Mood. I really like this blush again it's kind of that really deep berry shade but this one is much sheerer and much more emollient so it kind of just makes your cheeks look really healthy it gives a really nice glow to it there's no there's no like glitter in here to clarify but it's so balmy that it kind of just makes your cheeks look juicier even on the swatch you can see like how much more reflective the merit blush is compared to the victoria beckham blush because it is emollient it doesn't last the longest i like these for my more minimal makeup days where i'm not really doing anything i just want a little flush of color on my cheeks i do feel like it's fine to draw it directly on your face. Again, that's not my preferred way of applying blush, so I don't usually do that. I don't notice this picking up my foundation as much as some of the other cream blush sticks that I have. So I like it. I was thinking about picking up a different shade of this because they did do a shade extension recently. But honestly, again, I have so many blushes. I just don't think I need another blush, but I like the formula and I really like the no makeup makeup for most of my everyday anyway, so I think this fits really well into my collection. The first blush I want to talk about is the Kaja Whip Dreams blush. This one is in the shade 04 Mocha Tart. This blush is really moussey. The name Whipped Dreams makes sense because it is a whipped formula. It's much more mousse-like and you can apply this directly to your cheek and your eyes. I don't reach for this that often because the shade is so brown that again, I have to be in a specific mood. I really only reach for this in the fall time because of the color. I think if I were to have picked up a different shade, I'd like it a lot more and I'd use it a lot more. I think the formula blends out really easily. I think it looks pretty on the eyes. I just think the color is too dark and too brown, so I just don't reach for it that often, but I do think it's a really good formula and the packaging is just kind of fun. I don't know. I don't know exactly what about this makes me like the packaging, but it's a good time regardless. The next blush is this one. This is the Apu Juicy Pang Water Blusher. I don't know if I pronounced the brand name correct. Please correct me if I am wrong. This is in the shade. It doesn't say. I will put it on the screen if I can find it. But this shade is so pretty. The applicator definitely looks like a nail polish. So it freaked me out a little bit. I was worried that it was going to pick up my makeup or my foundation underneath. This is such a good formula. I love this shade on me. It's very bright. It's very summery but it's not too intense where it gives me clown cheeks. Like I feel like it had the perfect amount of pigment where one layer of this and I was good. And since it is a liquid, it does dry down and I find that it pretty much stays like no movement whatsoever. I really liked this. I really, I really, really like this and I think it's pretty affordable. I got this off Yes Style. Highly recommend these. They have so many colors of these two. So just find one, find a shade that you like. Highly recommend this blush. I have 
been really liking it ever since I did that full face of K beauty video. The next blush is my Rare Beauty liquid blush in the shade Joy. I have been working on this in my project pan. I do really like the formula. I find that it is very pigmented. It lasts a really long time, but since it is so pigmented, it can be a little bit daunting to apply it directly to your cheeks. So for this liquid blush, I tend to take the doe foot, I put a little dot in the palm of my hand, and then I use my brush and swirl it in the dot to evenly coat the bristles of the brush, and then I apply that to my cheeks that way. I have done like a dot on my face and then blended it out immediately, but some it just doesn't always work out for me, so I find that the palm method is the easiest and most consistent way to apply this blush. It does dry down relatively quickly as well so if you put a dot on your face you really need to work like at it immediately to blend it out so that it doesn't leave any like demarcation marks or anything like that. This is a mini size of the blush by the way and I have been working on this in my project pan for so so long so I I feel like this has been taking me forever so like one full size blush is definitely going to take me forever to use up and I already have so many blushes that I just don't think I would repurchase this blush specifically just because it can be a little bit finicky to work with. Once it dries down though it lasts all day. It's super pigmented like I said so you really don't need much and yeah I know this is like a cult favorite and I, I understand the hype. This just doesn't really align with my preferences so I probably wouldn't pick it up again. The next blush I want to talk to you about is from Benefit. This is the Benet Tint blush. It's technically a lip and cheek stain, but I really only use this on my cheeks really. This can be a little bit finicky to work with. I haven't found the best way to use this yet. If I draw it onto my cheeks, it can leave marks even though I have like my brush ready in my hand to blend it out. Something about this just doesn't blend the easiest for me. I've also tried drawing this directly onto my brush and applying it that way. I think the tint it gives is really pretty. I think the concept is really nice. I just don't think I've perfected the usage of this yet to get it to work for me in a way that is consistent. So I definitely need to give this a lot more testing. The doe foot on this is not the best. It's like this cheap looking doe foot. So it's not like the most pleasant to apply to your cheeks but I like the color. I can see why people like this. I just don't personally think I've found my groove with it yet. It also does have a fragrance, so if you are sensitive to fragrance, maybe avoid this. The Juicy Pang blusher also has a fragrance, to be fair, so just, just be aware. The next product is the <laughs> Charlotte Tilbury Pink Gasm Beauty Light Wand. I have said this before in the past, in a makeup I regret buying video and this is one of those items. I just don't really get the hype. It's too glowy. I don't love the color on my skin either. It's just this like, it's not a very flattering pink for my skin tone. So I just don't think it works for me. I know that there is not a lot of product in here. There's like a lot of air in here which I know is like the amount of product it's supposed to have, that's fine. But if I'm paying $40, I think it's $42 now, if I'm paying $42 for a blush, I want it to feel like it's full. Like if they made this blush, like the packaging of this, just smaller or skinnier and still had it be $42, I would feel better about it than it being bigger and having so much air. But that's just like a personal thing. I know a lot of people love this blush. I know it's like a cult favorite. I just don't think it's worth the money and I don't think it's worth the hype for the blushes that I like and the tones that I like. I have thought about pick, picking up some of the matte beauty blushes or beauty light ones, but I just don't think I would enjoy them. I think my experience with the glowy ones kind of just made me not really like the formula in general. So definitely a big regret in my in my collection. And the last cream blush I have is this one from Glossier. This is the Cloud Paint in the shade Storm. I picked this up for my Full Face of Glossier video and 
I really liked it. I think this is a beautiful blush. It is kind of the first blush that people were really, really interested in that was like a cream or liquid formula. So I feel like a lot of people consider them staples. This is a nice cream blush formula. I like it. I like it. Don't get me wrong. But if I'm gonna go for a liquid blush, I like the Juicy Pang blusher a little bit more. It's definitely a little bit thicker. Like the Glossier blush is a little bit thicker in terms of consistency. I like it. I think the packaging is really cute. I really like the shade Storm specifically. I think it is so pretty for the fall. I do really like this. I just think I have other blushes that I reach for, especially because it's summer and it's starting to get really hot outside. I just don't think I would be reaching for this shade specifically anytime soon. Moving on to my powder blushes. The first blush I want to talk about is the, I think it's the same single blusher. The shade of this is very bright, very pretty. It is very pigmented and very powdery. So when you're applying it, just be a little bit careful. Make sure you're tapping off the excess. It is so fun for spring and summer. I think it's stunning, but again, it is like a little bit powdery and there's a lot of kick up. So just be a little bit, a little bit aware of that. The next blush is the M Cosmetics Divine Skies blush. I think that's what it's called. I don't have it in front of me because it is currently packed away in my makeup bag and I just haven't unpacked it yet, whatever. I do really like that blush. I think that blush is very pretty. It's very glowy, but it's not too glowy where I feel like it's in your face. Like it's not as glowy as the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Pinkgasm one. The tone of it is way more neutral. I think it is perfect for like every day. If you're going for a bold lip look or a bold eye look, I think that blush pairs really well with any of those looks just because it is so neutral in tone but it's stunning on the cheeks. It is quite pigmented. Again, like just be a little bit careful applying it on the cheeks. I think it's a stunning formula. I do think it can leave like stamps if you don't buff it away like really, really well, but the blush is stunning. It's one of my favorite blushes. It's one of my favorite neutral blushes for sure. The next blush I wanna talk about is this one from Bare Minerals. This is the Bare Minerals Blonzer. This is in the shade Kiss of Rose. I think this is a really, really pretty blush. I think it is the perfect amount of shininess too. Again, not as shiny as the Glowgasm, Pinkgasm, Charlotte Tilbury, Beauty Light one, whatever. I like this one way more than I like the tone of the Pinkgasm bl blush as well. I love this in the summer especially. Again, it kind of gives me those sunburnt blush vibes. I just think it's a really good blush and it makes sense because another blush that I really really love is this one from cover effects this is the monochromatic blush duo in the shade spiced cinnamon i think you can tell in the swatches that they are so so similar honestly almost identical this shade and the blush topper shade here so so similar and if you layered these two you pretty much would get this I am not entirely sure off the top of my head how much the Bare Minerals blush is but the cover FX blushes were around $38 when I purchased them like $40 so I think the Bare Mineral ones is more wallet friendly it is still a, an expensive brand, don't get me wrong, but it is cheaper than the Cover FX blush, and it's the same kind of vibe. It's pretty much the same color story, it's pretty much the same shimmeriness, so if you have one, you don't need the other. The Cover FX blushes were one of my first blush loves in general. The first one I had was Cover FX Warm Honey, which is much more neutral and a little bit peachier, but not too peachy where I feel like it doesn't suit my skin very well. They're both stunning. I love both of these blushes. It has a matte side and a shimmer side. They're both also very pigmented. They're stunning though, and I do like that you get both finishes in here, so if you want a glowy blush, you can just go with the blush topper. And if you want a matte blush, you can just go with the matte, or you can do a little bit of both, which is what I typically tend to do but they're stunning. The pans are also ginormous. I have not made a dent in either one of these. And like I said, this was one of my first favorite blush formulas. So they're always gonna have a place in my heart. I don't think I'll ever declutter them, honestly, but they're very pretty and I really like them. And I almost just dropped that one. So we're gonna pretend like I didn't. The next blush I wanna talk about is my Essence the Blush in the shade 20 Bespoke. My blush has seen better days for sure. 
This is my go-to blush. I have used this so many times. This is always the blush I reach for when I don't know what blush I want to wear. I think it's stunning and I think it's very similar to Spice Cinnamon from Cover FX. I think in the swatches you can see how similar they are. This is so pretty. It also has like a nice sheen to it. Definitely not sparkly in any way, but it does have a really pretty sheen and I think the color is just so similar. So if you like the Warm Honey Cover FX blush, I think this is a really, really good dupe or alternative. And the Essence blushes are like $3. Granted, the packaging sucks. Broke almost immediately. And that can be very annoying. But for the price, I think it's worth it. I just love this blush. I love the formula. It's not too powdery. It blends so easily. I never have any issues with this. It's just so good. It's so good and it's $3. I love this blush. This is probably my most used blush, honestly. This is the only blush where I've made any sort of significant impact on it, even though it's not even that impacted. But you can see it just has a really pretty sheen to it as well. It's so stunning. I love this blush. Highly recommend. Cannot recommend enough. I really think I should get another one of these in a different shade, to be honest, because it's just so pretty. If I were to rank my blushes, I think this would be my number one. The next blush I want to talk about is this one from ColourPop. This is the pressed powder blush in the shade Forever Yours. This is in the heart packaging. I don't know if they sell this not in the heart packaging. I will say the heart packaging can be a little bit annoying to open, but the shade is so, so pretty. I love this in the spring. I think it's such a stunning blush. It looks really pigmented and it looks really intense, but it's not. It's like sheer enough that you can build it up and put apply it on your cheeks and not have it look like you're a crazy clown. I love the shade of this. I think it's so pretty for spring. It's not too pigmented either. Like it feels really soft to the touch, but it's not powdery and there's not a lot of kick up when you put your brush in it, which is really nice. I just think it's so cute. I love the heart shape. I think this is a really good affordable blush option. Anyway, love this blush. I have not tried any, any of the other ColourPop blush formulas though, so I cannot attest if the blush formula is good like throughout the whole line, but this is very pretty. I really like this blush. I think it is really good. The next two blushes I have here are both those cool toned pinks. If you've been on my channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm obsessed. Absolutely obsessed. The first one is the Persona Super Blush in the shade Bubble. Very cool toned pink. On camera, it looks very neon, but I don't think it is that neon in real life. And the Dior Rosy Glow Blush in the shade 001 Pink. Side by side, they don't look that similar. On the cheeks, I think they're very similar. So the Dior blush is expensive. It's $40. It is Dior. I think the imprint on it is pretty. I think the packaging of it is prettier than the Persona blush, but they're the exact same on the cheeks. You know, it's really up to you how much you want to spend. And honestly, there are so many brands that dupe this cool tone pink now that you don't need to go with either of these. I would say my most used is probably the Persona Bubble just because it is a little bit more accessible and a little bit more affordable. So if anything were to happen with this blush, I wouldn't be that upset about it. The Dior one is also stunning. The Dior one is definitely a little bit more reflective. It has a little bit more of a sheen to it than the Persona one, but on the cheeks they look so similar. I can almost never tell. Both of the formulas are really similar in my opinion. There's no kick up. It blends out really easily. I just love the cool tone blush. I know Dior is coming out with some new shades in this line, which I'm really excited about. I think I saw a rosewood shade that looks so up my alley. It looks so stunning. I love my cool tone pink blushes. I will shut up about them because I've spoken about them enough. And the last blush I have in my collection that I want to talk about is this one from Patrick Ta. This is the cream the Double Take Cream and Powder Blush in the shade She's So LA. This one is also a neutral tone blush. It has a little bit of like a red undertone, so it doesn't look super dark on my skin. I love the formula of the cream and the powder. I know Patrick Ta says to use the powder and then the cream on top. I have never done that. It is just not something that I tend to do. It's not the way that I learned to apply 
cream and powder blush so I just never can get my mind to like do that and switch the order like that. I'm sure you can. I'm sure it looks beautiful that way. I have used them separately and I like them separately a lot as well. It's just a really good formula. The cream part is not super emollient so I find that it lasts pretty well and the matching powder blush is just nice because it's a monochromatic blush. It just works really well together and I love that they're kind of formulated to work so well together. He has a ton of different colorways for this too. I know he has a cool toned pink one if you're interested. These are kind of expensive so again a pricey blush but the formula is stunning. I do like that it has this little flap here to cover the cream if you're using the powder. The packaging is cute in theory. In real life it smudges like crazy and I can never clean it enough where it doesn't have smudges so that's like a little pet peeve of mine I'd rather just have like a non metallic shiny packaging I'd rather just have a normal package package it's very pretty it's a very pretty blush I really like this blush and I think it's really versatile because you do have the cream and the powder and you can layer them in several different ways so those are all of my blushes I hope this was helpful I hope this gave you a good little insight into my blush collection and how much I love blush I have a lot of blushes I think I have a really good curated collection right now I think I have a really good mix of shades that I wear every day shades that I reach for a lot and a few really bright shades that are like pops of colors when I really want something fun. I think I have a really good mix. I really like the shades and the formulas that I have. There are obviously some that I like more than others, but overall I am really happy with my collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe if you aren't already. Hopefully I'll be back to my normal posting schedule by the time you see this. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys!